know, the first time he came, he came as a helpless little baby. But the next time he comes, my friend, he's going to come as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Tell him, Bill. Come and on, in Bill. That day, every eye hard. shall see, <laughs> and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is indeed Lord. The marketplace and the marketplace in downtown Birmingham is going to be empty. How many no times more you traffic to in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent. Mm. No mm. more time to the harvest, harvest wheat. wheat. Come on, Bill. The and hill. And Jeff. Housewives cease their labors. In our great courtrooms, I can't. no more debate. Cause no work debate. on earth has been suspended, my friend, as if the king mm. comes through the gate. For the wall. <laughs> He's going to bust through that wall. <laughs> the king is coming. That's it. Man, those dudes can sing, though. Oh, yeah. And now his face I see. Whoa, the king. <laughs> King is coming. King is coming. First time you sang that, I was like, I think that's a him. You're not. I think it's Bill Gaither. And sure enough, it was Bill Gaither. Bill Gaither. I absolutely. thought for sure it was a him. Damn. I guess technically is probably a homecoming now I, series. No, I am. But my brother will be so disappointed. He loves the Gaithers. They're awesome. Sorry, Tay. Anyways, welcome to the podcast. The King is coming. King is coming. Mm-hmm. Indeed. He's coming for me. Mm. The marketplace is empty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great song. He's coming through the People gates. Should, we should listen to that every morning. Yeah, or busting through the wall. No doubt. I thought about. Now nah, pro- that's probably sacrilegious. I thought about the Kool Aid Man busting you know through the wall. Oh yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah you, you know it's sacrilegious there. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's kind of interesting <laughs> is that you know G, uh, I, I kind of looked looked for the scriptural reference and you really can't find it that he's coming through the eastern gate, but it's it's probably there in in some form or fashion. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Um, the actual original Eastern Gate is underground because the Eastern Gate that you see right now is not the Eastern Gate from the original walls of Jerusalem. Hmm. It's one guy I was you know, reading about archaeologists, was biblical archaeologists, was talking about how it's actually down below the ground. But then I thought, well, it makes sense that when Jesus steps on the Mount of Olives. And facing the eastern gate, that the earth splits. Hmm. So it could be that the earth splits because he's going through that original gate. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know if that's the case, but that is a great example of getting into the weeds. I was going to say the <laughs> speculation. A little, a little too deep. <laughs> yeah, Got to right. get into the weeds a little too deep, Welcome which can happen. Welcome to our two-hour podcast, yeah, right. special yeah. edition. <laughs> <laughs> which can easily happen on, on topics like we've been covering the yeah. last couple of so for sure, which is why there's so much debate around which, Revelation. That's right, yeah. absolutely. So, yep, this week was our second sermon on uh, just the in the Worthy as the Lamb series. Yep. We're in uh, the second half of 19 and then going into 20, talking about the second coming of Jesus. So, um, yeah, it was a great message. I thought it was it was it's it's funny you you mentioned before that a lot of people have said you know you've got so much more energy so much more passion mm-hmm. with this and I think you are very passionate about this but it's also just um, I think people are just very intrigued and interested about Revelation in general because it's it's difficult to understand there's a lot of question you know there's um, but at the same time what what needs to be clear is pretty clear and we can get it so yeah I think that's the rule of thumb especially when you're dealing with the book of Revelation is is when you try to get into the weeds and you try to start understanding what symbolic and and what those things are and what they could be, what John saw in, you know, when he saw it in 94, 95 AD versus what that actually is today in the 2000s. You know, he didn't know how to describe the things that he saw. He described them the way he saw them. And so, so we know that there's obviously some symbolism in the book of Revelation, but we also know that when Jesus wanted to be clear about something and he wanted us to know something, he was very clear about that. Right. And so I think there are the, the important parts of Revelation. It's all important, but the parts that we really need to focus on and and I think help us understand prophetic calendar and 
in in times is is to stay above the symbolism and just really deal on what are those for sure things that we know that that we can land on and help people understand. And I think yeah. that and I think that's a part of the book of Revelation that brings people hope. Yeah. You know, it's a book of hope. It really it's, is. it's not a book of of doom and destruction. It's a great book of hope yeah. if yeah. we understand it and we focus on the right things. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and there are, there are, you know, multiple views of things and the book of Revelation. And, and what's interesting is you don't really have multiple views of six through 18. That's just the tribulation period. That, that's explaining the, the bowls and the vials and the trumpets mm-hmm. and the seals and those types of things. And so, you know, you don't really have a lot of, uh, I've never heard a lot of argument or discussion around that. You, you always hear it around you know, the, the rapture, you hear it around the millennium mm-hmm. and you hear it around those types of things. Yeah. You know, really trying to figure out, is it literal or is it not? Right. And I just, you know, I, somebody told this to me one time and I think it's a great rule of thumb when it comes to, especially like prophecy, really any of the Bible, but prophecy for sure. If you hand the Bible to somebody and they're a young believer mm-hmm. and you just, and they have, they have no, none of this preconceived views of all these millennial views and tribulation views and all that just hand them the bible and say read this as a believer and tell me what you get they're not going to come to you with all all of these different views of things right right they're going to come to you and say well it's obviously going to be bad Mm -hmm. and he's coming back Mm -hmm. and we're going to go to heaven like it's it's pretty clear Mm -hmm. yeah you know so i think you stay at that level and where people can be clear on what's most important. Yeah, absolutely. So um, kind of getting into this a little bit uh, with the second coming, there's a few things I wanted to kind of um, pick around about like in the actual passage. But uh, before I do, we did get a, a question this week that um, <laughs> maybe gets into the weeds a little bit, but still just a great uh, question for for clarity and kind of thinking through it. But they asked, is there clarity in scripture about whether or not those who are following the Antichrist and the false prophet will continue to follow them or do they turn from them? It seems hard to imagine that anyone would continue to uh, would continue in that destructive path. So obviously, after Jesus comes back, wages war, defeats the enemy, binds the enemy. Um, now, like those people who are following them, are they going to keep following them? Do we have any clarity on that or is it just like? Yeah, no, I I think like I love it when people think through these things and and get questions like that, because I I think a lot of these things we talked about some of this stuff this morning. A lot of these passages bring up questions that we want to try to figure out that there really aren't any explicit answers for. Yep. And so the only thing we can go on is what we know the scripture says. So we know that after the Battle of Armageddon, that the dragon, which is Satan, is bound for a thousand years. And then Jesus sets up his kingdom on this earth, the millennial reign of Christ. And so we know that there are going to be people who live through the tribulation period, who live through, obviously, the battle of Armageddon, and they're going to continue to inhabit this earth, and Jesus will reign over them, and we will reign with him. And so those people... I guess the question is, are those people going to continue to follow, you know, evil or are they, are they going to bow down to Jesus as Lord at that point? So I think that that's a great question. I, I, I mean, I think people obviously will be saved through the tribulation period. Uh, and I, and I don't, then there's really not an indication that everybody who's a believer in Christ will be, will be killed. I think it does say that those will be beheaded if they don't take the mark of the beast. So I, you know that, that again. That's that's a little bit of level of the weeds that needs a little more research. But I would say that to try to answer that question, Satan is bound. Jesus sets up his kingdom. It's his reign, and there's going to be. I mean, in, in the millennium, it changes. It's a it's a, what they call a reconstructed world. It's not a new world, but it's a reconstructed world because mm. of the way that things change. And um, or or some, it, it, the Bible also refers to it as a regenerated world, right? Mm. So. Animal kingdom's different. You've got, you know, the atmosphere is different. The longevity of life is different. Like there's a lot of things that are different during the millennial reign. Yeah. And, and so, you know, your view is, is that everyone is at peace. We do know that. So I guess the answer to the answer to the question uh, is that we do know the Bible says that there is no war and everyone is at peace during the millennium. Mm-hmm. So that would infer 
right? That people yeah. are not following evil, but are following right. good. Yeah. And so that's the only way I can connect that yeah. dot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if who you're following very clearly loses this battle and is bound for yes. what's going to be a yes. long period of time. Absolutely. Like, well, yes, I put my eggs in the wrong basket there. 100%. And yeah, yeah. you've got the picture that, um, and we know this, at the end of the millennium, Satan is going to be released one more time. Mm-hmm together what armies he can gather to again fight against god mm. and god goes blip and you know, <laughs> there's not even this the big presentation uh, it just god just destroys it yeah done yeah and then the new heaven and the new earth come so um and we'll talk a little more about that this weekend but yeah. um but yeah i i think the millennium is uh something that there's a lot of question around yeah it's really hard to understand but it's very clear and very literal yeah uh, about Christ's reign here on this earth. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so just to kind of pick around a little bit at this, uh, the passage that we were in Sunday, uh, just for, for clarity, in uh, verse 2 of chapter 20, it um, mentions that the uh, he sees the dragon, the ancient serpent, uh, who is the devil and Satan. So when it's talking about the devil and Satan, why, mm-hmm. does, it, why, does, why does it phrase it like that? Or the, is the devil and Satan two different people? Like, I've yeah. always heard of them together. Right. No. So earlier in the passage, you you got a you got a good snapshot of the unholy trinity. Mm-hmm. Right. You had the dragon mentioned. You had the beast mentioned, which mm-hmm. is the antichrist. And then you have the false prophet mentioned. And so you've got both. You've got Satan there. And you've got your political leader, and you've got your religious leader, who are all going to be driving the tribulation period. And so you know, once the so the dragon will be the political leader. No, the dragon is Satan. Oh, okay. The beast is the antichrist. Okay. And the false prophet is the got religious it, it, leader, it. right? So, so that so you've got the beast and the false prophet are dealt with at the beginning of the Battle of Armageddon, right? The first two things that Jesus goes after are the religious and the political leader, takes them, casts them in the lake of fire. Then he deals with everyone else. Mm-hmm. Then the last, then the last thing he deals with is the dragon. So when you've got those multiple names, those are just multiple descriptions of the same person. I got you. Yep. The same entity. Yeah. After I said um, that, I looked down and remembered. I just read the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil and saying. Yeah, that's yeah. right. No, and I, but I think it's a great question because yeah. when you read that, you're thinking is this multiple or is this the same? And yeah. so I think it, it, it's just bringing up all of those names that have been used for for Satan. Yeah. You know, gotcha. the deceiver of the brother. You know, mm-hmm. all these different names that describe his character. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the unholy trinity was the other one I was uh, going to mention, which you hit too. So, uh, yeah, and 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 you've really got to understand the tribulation to kind of understand this, the the battle of Armageddon, and that's yeah. why you spent a little bit of time on that this past Sunday, kind of talking about you know the prequel to the second coming of Jesus, mm-hmm. because there are some things that are going to happen, and and the Bible talks about happening before right. that. So, I think one thing we have to make sure we don't get hung up on is. Is there anything that hasn't happened before Jesus comes to get his church? Mm. And and from my perspective, biblically, there's not. There, there's not anything we're waiting on other than for him to come. Yeah. Um, so 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 as far as him coming to get us, uh, to give us our glorified bodies and take us take us to the to begin the marriage supper of the Lamb and yeah. the marriage banquet of the Lamb. The home taking. The home taking, yeah. exactly. Um there's nothing. There's nothing that needs to happen. Now there are there are others who believe it's called a pre a pre tribulation view, or there is a historical premillennial view. So some believe that that the church will go through the tribulation period, mm-hmm. be protected by the Holy Spirit, but then be raptured up at the end of the tribulation period. Yeah, and then come back down with Jesus. So, so you know, to be fair, there are those two views. My view is that the church will not go through the tribulation period. There are plenty of of examples in scripture to me, even in the old Testament of, um, of Jesus rescuing Noah and his family from destruction mm-hmm. of Jesus rescuing lot and his family mm-hmm. before destruction came. They're just, mm-hmm. they're just those examples. And then you've got plenty of scriptures in the new Testament that talk about us being taken out before the wrath of God comes. So, so anyway, all that to say, um, that will happen. And then this seven years of tribulation will happen. Uh, the, the book of Daniel talks about the time, it calls it the time of trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of Old Testament prophecy around this seven year period, and and this will be a period. And I think we, and I think we can actually begin to see this because this is the first time, probably in in our lifetime, that we've seen 
uh, Israel in a battle mm-hmm. and other countries responding to Israel. Right. So right now we're seeing a lot of countries stand against Israel and what Israel's doing. And, but you still have the United States and, and a couple of others that are standing with Israel, right? So, so we know that when Jesus says, when you start seeing wars and rumors of wars, know that the birth pangs have begun. Mm. Okay, so he gives us some indication that, hey, this, 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 this is about to happen. So it, it's not really he doesn't give us a timeline, but he does give us indication. So indication is birth pangs. So we know that when a, when a lady goes into labor, it, okay, a birth is about to happen. Yeah. So something's about to happen here. So so we we are seeing Israel in a battle standing with people against it plus people for it. There will be a time when all nations will stand against Israel. And that includes the United States, it includes any ally right now that Israel has. When you see that happening, Ezekiel prophesies that as well. That's when you know the king is coming. Mm-hmm. And so so right now we're just we're not there yet. Mm-hmm. So there will be a seven year period of time, which I believe once the church is taken up, that begins three and a half years of political peace, mm-hmm. three and a half years of religious deception, and you'll see the rise of the beast and the false prophet. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to think that there will actually be, and we could actually see it in our political climate today, a, a political leader who pulls everything together. Mm. That is so charismatic, that is so powerful, that has this false prophet that's doing signs and wonders and convincing people to follow this person. And it will all be done in the name of God. Yeah, That's what people don't understand is that they will be deceived even in believing that this is a movement of God. Mm-hmm. And, and so you've got that happening. And then once he gets everybody kind of following him, in that three and a half year period, he turns and it's all revealed and the mark of the beast comes and you either taking the mark of the beast or you're getting beheaded. You can't buy stuff. You can't go to the store. You know, it will become that if you don't follow this way, you're really going to have a, a problem existing in that last three and a half years. Mm. And so that's a time when a lot of believers will be killed. A lot of believers that, that, you know, people who become believers in the tribulation period, I believe, uh, will will lose their lives over that, and we read about that in uh, the that beginning of chapter twenty. You know, yeah. I saw those who were beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus Christ. That's talking about tribulation saints who lost their life uh, because they refused to take the mark of the beast. Mm. And so, so you've got this, and then this last three and a half year period will culminate in all of these because this is what happens. And Revelation sixteen talks about this. I, I referenced that that these demons are let loose to go out and deceive the kings of the world. So think about that. The river Euphrates dries up. Mm -hmm. The river Euphrates is a natural boundary right now that protects Israel from one side. Yeah. Well, that river goes away. Just goes away. So that the kings of the east, okay, kings of the east, so we know where they're coming from, can cross over into this planned battleground. Mm -hmm the plains of Megiddo, the battle of Armageddon. And they will all come there and they will wage war against Israel. Yeah. So little bitty Israel is going to fight every other kingdom of the world. And that's when the king comes Mm. and he's like, you, 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 you're not messing with Israel, (laughs) right? He comes on his white horse and it just blows. I said this, and I don't know if anybody else thought this. Okay. You're in a battle. Like I remember one time, and I and I mentioned this, and I didn't go into detail, but I mentioned standing on a line, looking across the line, thinking this is going to be a good day. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually in uh, Yugoslavia, which doesn't even exist now. For all you young people out there listening, uh, was, I remember hearing about that in history class. Yeah, I was wrestling in a country that. How about that, man? I wrestled in a country that doesn't, that doesn't even <laughs> exist anymore. <laughs> That's that awesome. You how long ago that was? That's awesome. And. Um, and I'll never forget, man, seeing the East German team because, you know, we were at weigh-ins and, and everybody was kind of, you know, you're looking at the Yugoslavian team and the Russian team and here's the Japanese team and here's the East Germans. Dude, the East, now this was back in uh, 80, mid-80s, uh, before they actually started testing. Of course, they weren't testing for Roy's and stuff over there anyway, Yeah, right? So the East, Gem- <laughs> East German team lines up to weigh-in. And bro, from like the smallest weight to heavyweight, 
they looked exactly the same, <laughs> just different sizes. Wow. And they were just blown. I mean, face. they were just, oh my goodness, blown up. Burr, and I'm like, Lord, please, please don't let me. Because I thought I was, you know, back then, built pretty, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that was a part of kind of my strategy. I was shorter anyway. And I'm looking over there going, like, that's what everybody's been talking about. Those are the experiments that people have been talking about, you know. That's it. Like, I'm looking at it. Like, yeah. I'm looking at Drago, you know, from the Rocky movie, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I lined up against that. I was like, this is going to be rough. <laughs> I came all the way to Yugoslavia for that, you know. But but to think about, okay, so here comes this, like, you see this white horse coming out of the sky. Mm-hmm. Like, your enemy comes to fight battle with you out of the sky. Yeah. Not like riding up. Dick, 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 dick. Comes out of the sky. <laughs> You know, and then how many thousands of white horses behind him? Yeah. Which we're not even going to do anything. Yeah. Okay, guys, we got a chance. Yeah. Okay, I think we got a chance. Now, I know he came out of the sky. Yeah. Not sure how all that works, but I think <laughs> we got a chance. Come on, are you kidding me? Oh, and they're, they're probably coming up thinking they're going to battle against Israel, too. 100%. They're coming up thinking, oh, this is going to yeah. be easy. Yeah. And then they look up. They're like, like oh, oh, man. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody told us they're bringing Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Well, and just the symbolism, you talked about that earlier, of, of Jesus appearing on the white horse. Anybody who has studied military history knows that in biblical times it was predominantly foot soldiers Mm. and so to recognize jesus and his army yes are elevated in stature yeah that's right that's right and that's a great point absolutely it's it's amazing right yeah Yeah. and it's not accidental no well and i think it's really cool to look at the scope of the life of jesus and know that you know the first time he came in his first coming um, his own people completely missed it because they were looking for the rider on the white horse. They, were, right. they weren't looking for the rider on the donkey. Mm-hmm. But if he didn't come in on a donkey first, the horse doesn't matter. Right. The white horse doesn't matter for us because we're still separated from God. Yeah. So we had to come in peace first before he came in war. Yeah. Because it's his first coming that allowed us to be a part of a second coming. Mm-hmm. And and that's what, that's what they missed. Yep. And so... Um, so yeah, so, you know, it's, it's just crazy to think that, that it's going to line up that way. Mm-hmm. And, and here's, what's crazy to me. It's all written down right. in a book and it's all explained. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like what are they, I guess they're, you know, maybe during that tribulation period, they're going to get rid of all the Bibles, which, which wouldn't surprise me so that they don't have a record of this. Oh, yeah. Because like, all you got to do is go read the last part of the book of revelation right. and you kind of see how this is all going to end hey here's what's happening yeah right now. like yeah. here's yeah. how this is not working out good for you uh-huh. oh no we no man it's gonna be different okay <laughs> see how it works out and yeah. they did and they will yeah i think patty was also wondering uh with the white horse what about people who are allergic to horses <laughs> uh, you know yes <laughs> To, uh, that again, was a question earlier. That's a, that's a good, real, real question. Like I'm okay. Number one, I'm scared of horses. Yeah. I'm allergic to horses. Uh, never ridden a horse before. All right, so all of those are wrapped up in the fact that you will have a glorified body. Yeah, right. no allergies. Yeah, no fear. And Nathan says, "Thank the Lord." Oh, yes, all of those things will be gone for us because. Uh, in our glorified bodies, it, it'll just be much, much different. So, yeah, we will be coming back, you know, and and that's one thing, too, that I heard somebody say the other day, or maybe I read it, is that a lot of people like to say, man, we, I'm, I've got a one-way ticket to heaven, got a one-way mm-hmm. ticket to heaven. Well, if that's the case, you didn't read Revelation. Yeah. Right. Because you really get a return ticket. Because mm-hmm. you're coming back. We're, yes, we are going up, but we're actually coming back Yeah. Uh, with him to be here on this earth for a while uh, before we go into our uh, that last eternal phase. Yeah. Which yeah. we'll talk about next week. I was going to so say, which, wanna, which is coming. To don't TV. want to uh, deal all my cards yeah, on the nice. podcast. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so talking about, uh, there's obviously some signs you mentioned that uh, in scripture that lead us to believe, you know, that all of these things have already taken place. These things have already happened. So there's nothing else that we're really waiting on. Um with all that being said, though, it, it also we were talking about this last week in our our life group that um, and we've we've said it in this in this passage that uh, or in this series 
that no one knows the time or hour right. that Jesus is coming. Right. And so, and looking back to when Jesus was here and said, I'm going, before he left, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Looking at last week um, when he ascended and then uh, comparing that to the marriage kind of process mm-hmm. at that time, that the the groom would go away, the father would prepare the place. And when the place is ready, that's when he would send right. um, the groom back. And so I- even if all of the, like, is it going to be an exact time that like once all this happens, boom, like that's when the home taking happens yeah. or is, I mean, is God still like, it's it, at the end of the day, I guess I'm, I don't know if this is a question or just kind of a, a pushback to some of that stuff that like at the end of the day, the timing is still in God's hands that right. like when, that's when right. he's ready to send Jesus back, he's going to send him back. Right. We have some indication of when that might be, but at the same time, all these things could happen and still, no one's going to know the time or hour. So if all these things happen, then we see it happening. Well, then we can start to get an inclination of, well, it might be next week. Right. Um, and so, you know, is there, do you think it's going to be exactly when all these things take place and that's, mm-hmm. it's going to lead right into it or, yeah. um, or w- would we still potentially be waiting after some of these things happen? Okay. So that's a great question because I think we have to be clear on what we don't know and what we know. Yeah. All right, so so let's go back to what we don't know. What we don't know is when the home taking happens, mm-hmm. and I think that's what Jesus is waiting for the Father to tell him. Mm-hmm. Now, so there will be a time when the Father says to the Son, "Go get your bride," and and we don't know when that is. Right, we're just waiting for that to happen. It could be any right. day. Jesus yeah. said, "Just be ready." Okay, so once that happens, though, we do know what's going to happen from that point forward. Hmm. Because once the process begins, we have a very clear view and revelation of what happens post home taking. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's where we have to make sure because we we can't say, well, we really don't know when the second coming is going to happen. Mm -hmm. No, we, we, we definitely know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen, happen at the end of the seven years of tribulation. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like once we, I think the clock begins, maybe a good way to look at it is the clock begins at the Mm home-taking. So if the home-taking happens today, then we know seven years from that point, we're coming back. Mm -hmm. And then once we come back, we know that we will be here for a thousand years reigning with Christ. Yeah. So, So I think there are some things that we know that once the clock starts, but we don't know when the clock is going to start. Yeah. If that, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So, so we're just waiting. And I think the home taking is, is that wedding language where we're in the betrothal period and we're, and we're waiting for uh, our, our groom to come back. He's gone and he's preparing a place. He's coming back for us. Once he does that, you know, and that second half of that wedding ceremony begins there are some things that he is going to take care of to kind of bring to the end of the culmination of all of this process. Cause we have to understand it all really doesn't end until revelation 22. Mm-hmm. So there's still some things that will be happening until we, cause the new heaven and new earth doesn't come until later. Right. Right. Talk about that this weekend. Yeah. yeah. But that's really at, only at a point where, because if you'll remember the the Bible says the rest of these did not come back to life until after the thousand years. Mm. And then he said, blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection, for the second death has no power over them. Okay, so the first resurrection actually has three different cycles, right? So the home taking is, is that's when we get our glorified bodies. Right. Tribulation saints get their glorified bodies at the and the tribulation at the beginning of the millennium. Mm -hmm. We see that in that passage. And the millennial saints will get their glorified bodies at the end of the thousand years. Yeah. So you've got this kind of three-stage view Mm. of the first resurrection. Yeah. Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection Mm. because the second death has no power over them. Okay, there's still a group that hasn't been dealt with yet. Those who are going to experience the second death. Mm. Well, who are those? We're going to learn about that on our Good Friday service. Mm. The great white throne judgment. That's another part that has to happen yeah. before new heaven, new earth, and 
we enter into that eternal state with our groom. Right. Right. So, so, so yeah, there's some very specific events that we, that we know happen. And I think once the clock starts, then it's in motion. Yeah. And then it kind of starts moving pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so you kind of gave, uh, some of the different views of the tribulation, uh, and what, and what kind of where you stand on that. Um, so when we talk about, obviously Sunday was on, so we got the, timeline wise tribulation then second coming so yeah. uh talking about the second coming what do we uh, obviously we talked about it sunday but what else do we know in scripture kind of of, of about the second coming or what's what's going to yeah well i think i think it's fair to um because you don't really have time on a sunday morning to get into okay there's this view and this view and this view right of those types of things yeah. but i think it's fair to to give a nod to those because again this is not a primary issue right this is a secondary tertiary type issue this is not an issue that splits us in our fellowship or causes yeah. us to not to not to partner with people right. i mean you know Doesn't make it, you a believer and I'm, or yeah. not a believer no not at all so you know we even have people on staff that that have a different view of uh of that so you've got again we talked about trip a pre-tribulation view of the home taking you've got a and when we say home taking i don't know if we clarified today but last week we talked about the rapture mm-hmm. and yeah i like home taking home taking is kind of a great of the, a great yeah, another so. word of that <laughs> but then you've got a what's called a historical pre-mill or historical premillennial view which says that that home taking or the rapture would happen at the end of the seven years of tribulation mm-hmm. there are some who 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 would believe in a mid tribulation but mm-hmm. but those are your two main yeah okay well, then you get into the millennium, and then you've got different views of the millennium. You've got premillennial, you've got postmillennial, mm-hmm. and you've got ah uh, millennial. Uh, a premillennial would be would would be one who would believe in a literal one thousand year reign, where it one thousand years is literal. Jesus will reign here on this earth, and it will be a continuous one thousand year reign of Christ with His saints. That would be a premillennial view. Okay. You've got a post-millennial view, which believes that, um, and, and this really was was popular, um, turn of the eight, uh, late eighteen hundreds into the nineteen hundreds, industrial revolution. So many things were going well mm-hmm. that a, a post-millennial view kind of rose that believes that that this world is just going to is going to continue to get so good. It's going to get better and better and better and better and better. And it's just going to get so, you know, so you've got first, second, third grade awakenings happening. You've got industrial revolution happening. All these great things are happening. That's like, it's just going to get so good. Jesus is going to come back and we're just going to hand him this great kingdom. So there's that, so that really they were kind of in the millennium, they thought, and Jesus is just going to come back at the end of the millennium and he's going to hand them, we're going to hand him this great Mm -hmm. kingdom that, has yep. gotten so much better. Well, the problem with that view is World War One happened <laughs> and kind of ruined all of that. Yeah. View, you know what I mean? There's still post mills, but but not many. Um, then you've got a millennial view, which which means no millennium, mm. is they do not believe in a one thousand year reign. They just believe that we're actually in the millennium right now. Mm. They believe that Christ is reigning right now. They would say that because people can be saved, because people's lives can be changed by the by the glory of Christ, that that we are actually, you know, Jesus' resurrection set him on the throne. And so we are in the millennium right now. It's not a literal one thousand years, but at some point Jesus will just kind of come back and we'll be in eternity. So that's yeah. kind of your millennial views. So I'm definitely premillennial in that I believe in a literal one thousand year reign here on this earth. And again, I go back to it may be simple, but I think it's a good way to look at it. Just take the Bible and read it. And, and if it says what it, you know, Jesus was very clear on what we needed to be clear about. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And he was not on the things that we didn't need to be concerned about. Mm-hmm. And I think our danger is to focus on the things we don't know instead of focusing on the things that we do. Mm-hmm. So let's just focus on the things that we know. Yep. And uh, trust that that's why it was written the way it was written. Yeah, Absolutely. Are there any are there any places in scripture that we see um, something in this context or this type of a thing that it's not literal like that? Because um, I, I know there's going back to even creation and Genesis. There's this kind of debate too of was it an actual day? Was it 24 hours? Mm-hmm. Was it you know a day is a thousand years to God? So we're mm-hmm. each of them a thousand years. Um, are there any places in scripture that it's not a literal 
that you just take it for what it is and it is. Absolutely. Well, and I think that there are, you know, ways that you inter- that you interpret interpret all of Scripture. You either have a literal view, um, and, and I do. I have a literal view of Scripture, right? So I believe that that when the Bible says it was, um, let, okay. So let me give an example. Um, there's the there's a whole thought out there of old Earth or new Earth. Mm. Or young Earth, old or young. I think that's called or young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, meaning, is the Earth millions of years old, or is the Earth only four thousand forty five hundred years old? Right. So, so can we trace it back to just if you take it just to biblical history, right? You, you've got to you've got to be young Earth, right? Or if or do or does your theology allow you to have an old Earth view and not necessarily put all the pieces together? Yeah. I heard. Was it uh, Jerry Vines? You know, back in my day, man, like when I was young, a young believer, Jerry Vines, uh, James Merritt, Charles Stanley, um, man, these like these were the preaching heroes that we all listened to, man. Such yep. Adrian Rogers, you know, mm-hmm. such uh, and all these guys kind of had uh, pre tribulation implement of views. Um, but I, I remember hearing Jerry Vines say this. He said, "The Bible is not a history book." But where it speaks of history, it is 100% accurate. Mm, yeah. The Bible's not a medical book, but where it speaks of medicine, it's 100% accurate. Yeah. So, so you know, we, we can't take the Bible and turn it, try to turn it into a history book. Right. Right. But where it does speak of history, it's 100% accurate. And so if it, believe, if it says God created the heavens and the earth, he created the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. No question about that. Uh, if it says, you know, six day, like I believe a, a seven day literal, literal theory of creation. Mm-hmm. Some people think that represents eons of time. Some mm-hmm. people think that represents a, th- a thousand years. You know, I think it, I think it's a day. Mm-hmm. So when I was at Lifeway, uh, we, we used to create material. It was called Youth Vacation Bible School material. And it went along with the theme of, of Vacation Bible School and, you know, for students. And uh, I'll never forget getting a call from Dr. Rainer's office that said, uh, Jeff, Dr. Rainer would like to talk to you about uh, some <laughs> material that was created. <laughs> I was like, oh, the president has called. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember, I think at the time, uh, a great friend of mine lo- lives locally here, was working on that. Pro- uh, but anyway, so somebody who had written that, a lot of that stuff is contract written. We take it in, edit it, and then produce it. They had made the mention because there was a picture of the Colorado, uh, the Grand Canyon, mm. right? Is that in Colorado? I think mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Uh, partially. Okay, good. I think. I was partially Wait, no, correct. I was part. The well, Grand whatever. Grand Canyon? It's yeah. in Nevada. Arizona. <laughs> Arizona. Nevada yeah, it's, and Arizona. It's there too. Yeah. It's grand. It's, it's in, in a lot of places. It's, it's in a lot of places. Sure in the West. Yeah. It's in so America. Geography <laughs> missed that class. So, uh, so it mentioned the Grand Canyon. And the person that wrote said, the Grand Canyon was created over millions of years of erosion. <laughs> Okay, somebody caught that and wrote the president of Lifeway complaining yeah. that we believe in an old earth theory yeah. instead of a new earth theory. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, really? You know? Yeah. But again, that goes to show you, you know, there's some people out there who are very passionate about those types of things, you know, old earth, new earth. And, and I remember Dr. Rayner, uh, I, won't t- I won't tell you the content of our conversation, but it was great. And the way he handled it was really was really awesome, you know. Um, so anyway, so I, I just think those like those things are out there. So to your to answer your question, also, we're all right. It's it's in Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado. Boom, Boom. So we're all right. Boom, bingo. Thank Nailed you. It. Nailed it. Geography teacher. <laughs> Smart. Um, so it's a Grand Canyon, obviously. Um, so yeah, so I think there are those types of things like that 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 people will want to gravitate toward. They want to argue about, they want to make it a primary issue. Right. And, you know, do, do I get upset? I, I firmly believe in a six day literal theory with the seventh day of rest, six day literal theory of creation that mm-hmm. God created everything in six literal days, mm-hmm. seventh day you rested. Some people will believe differently. They will believe it was 6,000 years and a you know, thousand years of rest, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't cause me to, not want to have fellowship with those people. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think that's a primary issue. Um, But for me, you know, I I believe that literally. And so um, I I think that's where we have to, 
you know, again, some people may believe. I remember I had a great friend of mine at Lifeway in our in the student ministry world who I said he was all millennial. And I would and I would say, dude, what's that mean? He's like, I don't know, man. It just sounds cool. I, I wrote a paper on it, <laughs> oh, so I'm 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 all mill. I'm like, yeah. no, you're not. You don't even know what it means. <laughs> but you know, I mean that that didn't yeah. you know cause us problems. We just laughed about it and went on. Right. And so I th- I think when and, and honestly I think I think we have to be careful that we don't allow Satan to make these issues primary issues mm-hmm. that cause us conflict in the body of Christ. Yeah that's when you really get into trouble. And Absolutely. I think that's what Satan can do that. I think yeah, Satan can 100%. take God's, the, the word of God. And, you know, here's, here's the, you know, it's amazing. I believe this. I think you can trace every problem right back to the original sin. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, literally you can. I mean, right. that, that, sure. that's, that's not necessarily earth shattering. <laughs> Wow, wow, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, like, when you, when you start thinking about things and you trace it back to what, what the serpent said to Eve, did God really say that? Mm-hmm. Did he really say that? Okay, so the earth was created in, uh, everything was created in six days, and he rested on seven. Did he, did he really say that? <laughs> uh, he's coming back. Now, see, now I'm I'm kind of crashing against the people who don't believe that, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I'm just saying, like, that's how, I think it's how easy it is for Lucifer, you know, for, for the devil to still get us to look at God's word mm-hmm. and go, eh, it really doesn't mean that. Yeah. Well, no, it, yeah, it does. <laughs> it, it does mean that. And if that doesn't, and again, this is coming from a literalist, literalist point of view. If that does, if, if six days of creation doesn't mean that, then how do I know the, the cross means what it means? Mm-hmm. And you say, can you really make that connection? Yeah. You absolutely can, because read Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews, chap- Hebrews chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, which is the Hebrew Faith Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. You know what the first thing it deals with? Creation. Mm-hmm. The basis of our, I, I feel like, belief belief in God's word has to start with creation. Mm-hmm. Like, if we can't believe Genesis... You know, I remember when I was in seminary, there was a big, big debate on the first 11 chapters of Genesis. Yeah. You know, because, you know, was it stories? Was it, was it just fables? Was it, is it really real? Was mm-hmm. there really a tire Bible? Was there really an ark? Was there really, you know, all those great stories, right? And it was like, everybody was cool with Genesis 12 forward where Abraham starts, mm-hmm. but one through 11, eh, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and what they would say was, well, there are other religions in the world who have similar stories. And there are. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> they stole our stories. Right. Like, we didn't steal theirs. They right. stole our stories. Yeah. They needed a story of God. Yeah. So they made a God for themselves and stole our stories. Mm-hmm. Now, people, could argue, people could argue with that. And they say, well, that's a very simplest view. I'm just a simple guy. Yeah. I mean, I think what helps people... Is that's, I think that's why people are, are are responding to this series so well. Is I, it's just simple. I mean, it's like it's black and white on the page for me, right? You know, and and let's help people understand. Here are the things that are coming, and this glorifies Jesus. Yeah, like the spirit of prophecy is Jesus. Yeah, and so all this is about Him. Yeah. And so as long as we focus on that and not our views and our differences, let's just, man, keep it pointed to Jesus. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think we're moving in the right direction when it comes to prophecy. Yeah, absolutely. And to back your point too, just pointing back to the, the Garden of Eden where it all stems back to that first sin. Uh, we were talking earlier about, uh, you know, a lot of times when people talk about Revelation or read Revelation, uh, they'll point to commentaries or what other people are saying mm-hmm. about things. And commentaries are great if you got the right commentary, but commentaries are great. Looking at former pastors, you pointed to Jerry Vines and yep. Adrian Rogers. There's some great guys to look to that have spent their lives studying scripture. John MacArthur. Yeah. He, he's another one, man. Yeah. David Jeremiah, another mm-hmm. one. Like yeah. even modern, you know, modern day guys absolutely. now that are so very strong. Spent their lives studying scripture that we can absolutely point to. But also it's important for us to know what, what we believe and, and read it for ourselves That's and right. understand it. 
Um, but there's this, some of these kind of gray area things we want to make a hard stamp on and make it black and white when it may be a gray area. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of this idea, uh, of looking back to the garden of Eden, there's really something that God knows that you don't know that he's trying to hide from you. And not to say that that's the way that it is about all of scripture and all these things or that, that, you know, but you know, he, I think he likes to create confusion yeah. and there's a lot of times that, uh, we as believers spend time arguing with other believers about things that aren't concrete black and white things yeah. and that aren't foundational to our belief anyways. Yeah. Um, and I just see Satan looking back thinking, yep, there you go. Y'all keep arguing yeah. and talking yeah. while the lost world's out here. Well, you know, I, I, and not I, knowing I just, about it. I just thought about kind of the phrases that we use when we, when we say, don't die on that hill, mm-hmm. don't die on that hill. Right. And so I, I would say that to people that are listening to this, you know, if you know somebody who has a different view of the the rapture, we call the home taking, mm-hmm. if you know somebody who has a different view of the millennium, don't, don't down that hill. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, down the hill, that's worth dying on. What, yeah. what hill did Jesus die on? Jesus died on the hill of our salvation. Right. Right. The cross is what's important. <clears throat> Paul said, I preach Jesus in him crucified. Right. That's what I preach. That's the gospel message. Yeah. Yep. So don't don't get don't start dying on hills mm-hmm. that Jesus didn't die on, and and, and we've got to remember that. And so yep. you know, yes, it's important for us to know. I do think it's important for our people to be prepared. I think it's interesting t- for me to hear some of our people say, "Man, I've never heard that before." Mm-hmm. Well, it may have been that they've heard it before, maybe in a different context or a different format. They probably heard it before, but but I, I think it may just be our time right now that our people understand it. Right. Right. Our people get it because what, what does scripture do for us? What does the truth do for us? Mm-hmm. Man, it, it, it energizes us about Jesus. It yeah. points us to Jesus. It doesn't, yeah. we, we don't get all jazzed up about our view. And that's kind of the, the, my point in all of this is not to be, not to be view focused, mm-hmm. but to be Christ focused. And so this hopefully is getting yep. our people excited. Yep about Jesus, more excited about him. Absolutely. And that's the key is remembering the foundation, which that's is right. the gospel. Because we're not saying that, you know, if a, if a Muslim believes most of the things that we believe, but they also believe in Muhammad and all these other prophets that we shouldn't argue with them. Like they, they have missed the mark. They, they are they, still they, believing in other gods in a different right. way to heaven. Yep. And so there's different religions that may, and you mentioned some of these that pull from scripture stories that, yeah. and it could, they could make it very confusing. Um, and, and, Muslims, for example, believe in the Bible. That's part of their belief system. But then they add to it with the Torah and the Quran, right. and and so uh, yeah. See, I'm dying on that hill. Yeah, because then that that challenges the gospel. That's the right. core of what yeah. we Absolutely. believe. Absolutely, without yeah. question. So, without um, question. So, talking about old Earth, what about dinosaurs? Did dinosaurs? Really yeah, there you go. Did they exist? <laughs> you need you need to go up to Creation Museum <laughs> in Kentucky, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they'll help you with that. Yeah, nice. Are there uh, are there though different <laughs> views on the second coming? I know we we talked about tribulation and millennium. Second coming just kind of seems to be what it is. Are there it, different? It really views on is, that man. One? I've I've never really you know heard anybody <clears throat> argue or 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 create some kind of other view of. Like it's about as clear as mud. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, that's not right. But it's, anyway, it's clear. <laughs> I don't know if that the analogy. Opposite yeah, of the right. <laughs> yeah, that, that analogy didn't work. But people say that that's clear as mud. Yeah, that means it's not clear. Which may mean it's not clear. <laughs> there you go. Um, but no, I, I, I mean, I think people know he's coming. I think they, they always want to debate when. Yeah. And then what happens after? Yeah. You know, but but I, I've I've rarely ever heard anybody in the evangelical world yeah try to talk about something different when it comes to the second coming yeah yeah gotcha yep well that's good i think this has been good Do you have anything else on second coming or this yeah week? i just appreciate patty um talking a lot this this yeah. uh this time you know th- during this time as we've talked about the second so coming what are you trying Jesus. to say jeff <laughs> no, I'm just, no i i well i just think this is hard because it's it, it's even kind of hard to to podcast on it because yeah, yeah. it just is what it is. Like yeah. it, it felt like it's more of this is happening, this mm-hmm. is happening, this is happening, and this is what those things are. Yeah. You got any questions? Yeah. Okay. No questions. Great. No thanks. questions. Let's yeah. talk about dinosaurs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's and I think it's easier. To, I just gotta aggravate Patty. I mean, you yeah. know, like I mean, she's sitting over there. 
uh, on the observing. call in the call earlier, you know, we were talking yeah. to Julie and her and Madison. Hey, Patty, we're on your team. <laughs> what? yeah, whatever. <laughs> got to bring her back down. Yeah, that's they right. They're wise bring, women. Bring, bring her back. Yeah, <laughs> got to bring her back down to the earth. But, but, but yeah, but I, I think sometimes uh, that's why we get off on those other types of topics. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm. like dinosaurs. Like I, I, I really, I don't know. Like yeah. I don't know where <laughs> it all fits in. You know, um, and I know there are people who who take a stab at it, but yeah. like uh, we don't have clear evidence of that. Creation people would probably argue with me. Yeah, I don't see clear evidence of that where they actually fit. Yeah. So am I going to spend brain space right. figuring that out? We know they existed. Yeah. Well, we know, like we can't argue with that. Right. You know, we know they existed. We get the carbon dating all that kind of stuff. But I don't know how that comes together. Yeah. I, 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 and I don't think that's what matters, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Um, so I think we've, again, got to be careful going back to just be careful what hill you die on. Yeah, for sure. You know, and what we make an issue and what, when, especially when it comes to this type of stuff, because what Satan wants us to do, Satan wants to get us off of the view of what's most important. Mm-hmm. Here's what's most important. He's coming to get us. Yep. We're coming back with him. Yep. He'll, he's going to defeat all of his enemies and set up his kingdom. Yeah. You think Satan knows he's going to lose at yes. this point? He does? Yes. He's still going to go to battle? Absolutely. Dude, he's read the book. Yeah. I mean, he he completely knows the end of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But see, he doesn't believe it. Mm. So, you know, if he doesn't believe it, then he still thinks there's a chance. Yeah. I mean, I've, I firmly believe that when Jesus was crucified, I think he thought he won. Yeah. Got him. Got him. <laughs> oh. Didn't see that one coming. Mm-hmm. Easter Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. It's hey, Friday. Hope got you. But Sunday's coming. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. Oh, I guess stop we, can do that now. Ne- we can do that next podcast. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll be Easter the next Sunday. <laughs> it's Friday. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's been good. Uh, I was wondering if we were going to make it through this one because I'm like, I don't know what to talk about, but it's been good. It's been good. And yeah. we, didn't, we didn't talk about sports either. Last time I was like, I thought it was going to be a sports podcast after we got started last week. Started talking well, about the NCAA basketball tournament does football. begin this week. It does. Wrestling, not basketball. <laughs> <laughs> we came in and said, NCAA tournament this week. I was like, yeah, man. That's right. He's like, nah, wrestling. Because it's like I said, I think I said this in the 8th <laughs> service. I think I said it in the other services. Basketball is what people do that can't wrestle. Is that right? 100%. Dude. We will, we will, we will, we will no, support we won't. you in no, that we thought. Won't. <laughs> we'll let you think that. I might be 60, but I can still get into those shoes. <laughs> Do we that's dare great. ask what the outcome was of your wrestling match? Oh, that's true. Yugoslavia. With the East German? Yeah. In the extinct country? Speaking of sports. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Uh-huh. That must be a bad sign. That's yeah. A great yeah. political. That's not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> like I said, I looked across there and thought, this is not going to be a good day. And you were right. It wasn't a great yeah. day. Then he was knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Not when a guy's trying to rip your rib cage out of your chest. Yikes. Yeah. Those guys don't play fair. Uh-huh. But anyway. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you guys for listening. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you next see week. See you next, next week, week with the millennium. As we talk about heaven. That's, that's not just millennium. a millennium. Well, that's part oh, of it. Having to. That's yeah. part of it. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Revelation. And more. Worthy is the land. <laughs> <laughs> see you then. All right, see y'all.